Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about 10 mistakes beginners make. I've personally made some of these mistakes and I'm sure you've came across them as well. So let's just get into number one. The first mistake on my list is buy quality equipment. If you're buying cheap equipment, I feel like you're going to be buying twice. You know, you have the common saying, you buy cheap, you buy twice. If you buy cheap, it might break and then you might be replacing it and buying the first thing you wanted, the thing you wanted in the first place. So there is plenty of equipment out there and it doesn't have to be expensive. You can buy cheap equipment secondhand and that's quality equipment. There's plenty, plenty of brands out there that now produce lighting, fertil fertilizers, um, everything you could possibly think of at a reasonable competitive price um, for you. So you gotta be buying the quality just so you have the success in the long run in the end, you might actually be saving money. The common mistake number two is uh, not using enough plants. You need to use enough plants. If you plant densely from the start, you're gonna give your tank a much better chance of success. And therefore, you know, some plants might not get algae or as much algae. You're just gonna have a much easier startup than if you just used a couple pots of plants in a large tank. So make sure you're buying enough plants, plant densely for the best success. To add on to using lots of plants, make sure you buy some fast growers. If you're just starting out, having some fast growing plants or some floating plants as well um, will give you an easier start. And especially if you're a beginner, those fast growing plants are really gonna help you. Number three on my list is more of a pet peeve for me, um, using too much cosmetic sand in an aquarium. If you've ever looked at a tank and you've seen this really thick layer of cosmetic sand at the front of the tank or gravel, uh, it just doesn't look quite right. Um, and it's only just there for cosmetic purposes, uh, hence the name. So, you know, you only really need a thin layer of sand or gravel just to cover the glass at the bottom, really. So just consider that when you're making your next tank or even replace the sand in your current tank, just take it down. You don't need all that sand. Mistake number four on the list is uh, not using some sort of aquasoil or nutrient-based layer. Some people might use sand and just plant straight into sand or do gravel, um, straight up gravel with no nutrients. Um, they might even use root tabs and it may work for some plants or some easy category plants, but you're gonna have the best success with using an aquasoil. And the reason I suggest aquasoil, I feel that it's the easiest route to success. It's gonna be the cleanest route instead of using like uh, soil with, uh, sorry, like garden soil with um, a cap of uh, sand or gravel. It's gonna be a bit more messy. If you're wanting a clean tank for the, e the easiest route to success, I believe personally that aqua soil is the way to go. You could also use things like a nutrient bit rich base layer and then cap it with gravel. But I would suggest that aqua soil, pay the money for the bag of aqua soil, shop, shop around, find the best aqua soil for you and uh, go with that. Number five on the list is not doing enough uh, consistent maintenance. Whatever your routine is, if you're doing a water change every week, twice a week, every two weeks, just keep it consistent. If you're missing a water change or not doing what you did the previous week consistently on a weekly basis, or whatever you do, um, you might lead, lead into some problems, you might get some algae. So the most important thing and one of the best tips I could possibly give is uh, keep it consistent. Number six on the list is try to do as much research as you can. Some people don't do as much research as they maybe should be when they're starting out. You gotta be learning all the time. You gotta be a sponge for information. You, um, watching as many YouTube videos as you can, reading as much as you can especially. So just to try and absorb as much information to then apply that information to your first tank or your next tank. It's a really, really important step, so don't skip it. Number seven on the list is asking how to kill algae before you ask, why is the algae there? A lot of people ask me, um, how do I remove this algae from the tank or how do we kill this algae? But I think the most important thing you need to ask yourself is what is the root cause? Why is the algae there? Why was it there in the first place? Generally, if we try and fix the root cause first, we, the algae will actually disappear by itself. It's obviously helpful to try and remove the algae manually or sometimes in some cases use some chemicals, but I prefer to not do so if we can just find the root cause and fix that first. So ask yourself, what is the root cause and how can I fix this? There can be many, many reasons for algae appearing. Too much light, too much flow, not enough fertilizers, you know, the list goes on. So try and find the root cause of why the algae is in your tank and fix it that way. Number eight on the list is expecting the social media plant growth 
without using the same equipment as these people on social media. So generally, a lot of people that start the hobby won't use CO2. And they'll see these tanks on social media that are just lush and beautiful stem plants, and they'll, they'll expect this without using the same equipment. And going back to the CO2 topic, I believe that CO2, most people say CO2 isn't a beginner friendly thing. And I believe it is. It's not actually too difficult. And it's, if you read the instructions and watch a couple of videos, do a bit of reading, I think it becomes quite easy. So don't be scared to try the CO2. But you shouldn't expect, if you're not using the CO2, you shouldn't expect those in CO2 injected results. And there's no, there's no harm in not using CO2 as long as you pick the right plants for the non-CO2 environments. So choose CO2, high light, no CO2, lower light, and pick the right plants for each scenario. Um, and uh, expect the results for the, each scenario, obviously. So don't expect the, the beautiful, dense stem plants if you're not using CO2. Number nine on the list is getting a massive tank and then not buying enough plants or not doing this and not doing it correctly. I think buying a smaller tank when you're a beginner is super helpful. All my tanks right now are actually really, really small. And th what this allows me to do is rescape it, learn a lot more because they're smaller tanks, they cost less. The equipment of the soil, the, uh, the plants, I don't need enough plants, I don't need enough this, that, and you know, everything. Um, so it's gonna be cheaper for me to keep rescaping, trying new things, learning. And I think that's really important to a new beginner to the hobby is um, always changing it up, swapping it up, rescaping, trying new things, trying new aquascaping styles and plants. It's uh, much easier if you keep things on the smaller side rather than getting a big tank and then having to run it for a year or two um, before you rescape and you have the, the funds to do so. Number 10 on the list is mixing different strategies, different people's strategies in with your method. And what I mean by this is if you're watching two different people on YouTube or you're reading two different articles from two different people or even if you're looking at ADA method and the EI um, Tom Barr's EI dosing method and you're mixing these strategies together picking picking different um, elements from each and trying to make your um, it may work but you're probably as a beginner gonna have more success picking one method and sticking true to it obviously listen to everyone be a be as, as we went back to one of our previous um, uh, points listen to be a sponge from information listen to everyone do as much research as you can but try and pick one method and stick to that because you're probably gonna have the best success with that rather than taking mixing different parts of different strategies together. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. This is a fun little video, 10 mistakes beginners make. And um, this is just my list. So if you have any other um, mistakes that you think, uh, you know, really stand out to you, um, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.